column of Russians is advancing. The first tank that steps on a mine forces the whole column to slow down. Next, we see two precision drone strikes at once. The invaders' battle order is disrupted, but their advance continues. The Russian columns split up. The drone hits a tank, but its armor withstands the impact. The invading tanks are already near the deployment site. They're moving down the road toward the wooded area. The first tank is hit by a mine. A Russian tank takes down a tree with a cannon shot. A kamikaze drone stops the target with a precision hit. And the second drone drops an explosive directly onto the tank's turret. But after a nighttime repulse, the Russians attack again the next day. They manage to intercept them in the field. The occupants got close, so they opened fire at them from ATGMs. The tin can slides uncontrollably into the abyss. On behalf of the drone, we see the synchronized destruction of the enemy. The final blow turns the APC into the atoms. But this is only the beginning. The Russians turned their vehicles around to retreat, but the AFU didn't let them go. The Russian tank could not have expected such a sensational finale. This is the kind of fire show a small Ukrainian drone can put on. Scattered pieces of the tank are left to burn on foreign soil. Ukrainian drones knew where to look for the enemy. They struck when the vehicles were moving between the trees of the forest plantation. First, they hit it from the rear, and then they finished it off. The powerful explosion means that a large stock of Russian munitions was eliminated. Ukrainian kamikaze drones hunted down single targets. Without replenishment of ammunition, and with the logistics cut off, the occupier's offensive stalled. While this target burns, a Ukrainian kamikaze drone hunts the other one. The tank loses control. Next, the FPV flies up to a hit armored vehicle, but it's only damaged, not finished. The kamikaze drone fixes it. The AFU were prepared for this attack. Reconnaissance passes the coordinates to artillery and mortars, and all hell breaks loose. The battlefield was covered in smoke. Drones joined the battle. They slowly fly up to the stopped armored vehicles and make the final strike. The APC ignites and slowly turns into ashes. The neighboring tin can will suffer the same fate. Among the two destroyed targets, a whole one is found. An RPG hits, and the tank goes up in flames. From a high altitude, it would be impossible to distinguish the remains of a tank from a working combat vehicle. But experienced pilots carefully examine the battlefield and find an enemy tank hiding at an intersection. Several kamikaze drones have flown in to put a stop to the Russian attack. The first strike hit the already burned vehicle, but the second hit the survivor's ammunition, raising a fireball of explosion. That's how the Russian vehicles are holding their ground. Now let's see what happens if you shoot Bradley with the Russian's best ATGM. First hit on the Ukrainian APC. Bradley is still on the move. Second hit stops the APC. Armor is still intact. The crew got out of the Bradley without a scratch and escaped. I think this deserves your like. The Russians made a breakthrough with two combat units. The vehicles moved along a track. This allowed the vehicles to reach high speed. But an AFU drone shot down the second unit. A fire broke out. There's information about another lone target. A group of Ukrainian kamikaze drones are flying in after it. It had a chance to get to the shelter unharmed. First Ukrainian drone hit, but did not penetrate the armor. However, 
the occupiers slowed down. The second strike also fails to penetrate the armor. Immediately after that, the tank hits a mine, but still remains on the move. This target was not easy for the AFU. Now this walking smoke bomb is trying to escape. But at full speed, it is met by several Ukrainian mines. Still, they manage to stop the tank. All that's left is to finish it off. The kamikaze drone successfully copes with this task and gives us spectacular fireworks. After the blow, only scattered pieces of metal were left. The other part of the column was stopped by mines. The tank was able to withstand the first impact, but after the second one, the fire started. While the tank is burning, another APC hits a mine. Two drones started to kill it at once at the same time. The synchronized strike causes a fire. We see a pile of ammunition inside, which intensifies the flames. At the same time, passing through a wooded area, the first tank hits a mine. The three targets move deeper. There they are met by artillery. And of course, mine again. The APC felt its power. Ukrainian drones are catching up with the enemy's equipment at full speed. And then there's this. A drone blinds a mutant tank, and it hits a lot of mines, creating a chain reaction. The mines cause irreparable damage to the enemy. Just look at the beauty of it. Now, the fire will melt the metal of the invaders for hours. The Russian MTLB tried to take advantage of the cover of night, but the mines don't care what time of the day the orcs are attacking. The remains of the vehicle were burning even the next morning. A hit by the Ukrainian FPV leads to an explosion that tears out and throws away part of the Russian vehicle's hull. After the first detonation from the hit, the Russian tank burns out from the inside as if it were paper. The succession of flashes looks like a modest fireworks display. This is how our friends from the 71st Jaeger Brigade destroy the enemy. They are carrying out tasks on the Kharkov direction and asked us for help. They need five of these Starlinks. The price of one is $500. Our task is to help them buy at least one of them. If you trust us, details are on the screen and in the description. We'll report back as soon as the Starlinks are delivered to the troops. Russians often use mounted structures on their vehicles. These grids are cheap and easy to install. When a drone is hit, most of the explosive energy does not reach the target. To counter this, the AFU uses several tactics. This is the depletion of the Russian defense. Several hits in one area first break through the defense and then the body of the occupier's equipment. Experienced pilots also know where these structures are not. A steep turn and a hit. The tank doesn't decide to continue on the open road and stops on the side of the road. It now becomes an easy target for the Ukrainian drone. The first hit doesn't cause the fire and the most experienced pilots can hit the hatch of a Russian tank. Now the fire is blazing inside the Russian tin can. Moments later, bright flames engulf it and turn it into atoms. Sometimes, after the first hit, Russian vehicles scatter a sheaf of sparks and lose control. After such an accident, the APC still needs to be finished off. To do this, a kamikaze drone aims precisely at the empty compartment for landing troops. An explosion from the inside tears the APC apart. Ukrainian Mavics recorded another Russian assault. The equipment was destroyed on the far outskirts. The drones are very small and invisible at a distance. Sometimes one hit is not enough to destroy it, but it is enough to stop the enemy. After that, the kamikaze drone gets enough time to maneuver. It seems that the Russian equipment explodes by itself. This is how it manages to fly under the Russian defenses and hit a cannon 
or a weekly protected hull. Problems with the signal from the Ukrainian FPV are not accidental. The enemy's EW works perfectly and jams the drones. But the Mavic detects the hit. On the inertia of the flight, the Ukrainian FPV managed to hit the target. Strikes from the flank and right into the hatch blow apart the enemy hull. There's no point in evacuating this vehicle. It's beyond repair. A precision drone strikes on the occupant's APC with camouflage, and the protective mesh is burning up nicely too. The Russian T-80 is firing, but does not notice that the Ukrainian drone is already approaching from the rear. The armor there cannot withstand the impact. As well as near the hatch in front, if the rear is additionally protected, there are few vulnerable areas. They are small. You need considerable experience for such jewelry work. But this experience helps to find well-camouflaged and hidden units of the occupier's equipment and fry them. A fire in a BMP-3 after a kamikaze drone hit makes the vehicle hopelessly broken. Take a closer look. Smoke appears immediately after the impact. And after that, there's flames. It's pointless to evacuate this APC. The work of artillery guided by Mavic is effective. It allows them to destroy enemy vehicles immediately after they leave the shelters of buildings. The occupiers are preparing for the attack quite well. Look at this. They're setting up a smoke screen in the direction of their movement to make it harder to hit them. The first Russian APC is hit by several mines at once. It's the second one's turn. Destroyed equipment of the occupants blocking the way. A mine lies in front of it. The APC successfully detonates on it. This is the end of the attack. A Ukrainian drone spotted a Russian self-propelled gun. It was in a hiding place, but it was tracked down and burned. That was Giacintius. Look at it from another angle. You'll agree that it explodes very spectacularly. You can see those huge puffs of smoke from miles away. The guns are especially dangerous because they are long range have a large caliber, and it is extremely difficult to calculate their location before firing. But once they're detected, HIMARS is easily dealt with. The Russians' counter-battery radar does not fire shells or missiles. Kamikaze drones cannot reach it because of the EW. But the Mavikas transmit the coordinates to the missile forces, and these units pour fire on the area. The target is hit. Ukrainian intelligence has spotted an important target in action and relayed the coordinates to HIMARS. The enemy is tracked to the storage location and destroyed with long-range missiles. The occupier's call, Zemle de Lille, is extremely dangerous and rare. The discovery of this equipment was already a small victory, and then, destruction. Since it is a mine system, its own ammunition turns both the vehicle and the surrounding area into a fiery inferno when detonated. Some mines fly out along a curved trajectory, directly from the leaky hull of the burning vehicle. Only small burnt parts remain of the mine system. 